I spent the first two weeks, every morning and every afternoon, sitting in a different department, just to convince myself that these kids had not an idea. And I slowly got more and more depressed because in every department, there was a level of enthusiasm that is found nowhere else in the world and excellence that you'd only expect to find in, in the great film capitals of the world. But I still had a way out. What is the director? How does he handle his crew and his cast? So I went and watched Peter directing for a scene or two. He had the answers to everything. He was enthusiastic. His crew loved him. His way of dealing with his cast was marvelous. And I realized, slowly it dawned on me, it realized, and then two weeks into production, we had a press conference. And everybody was there, you know, Lord of the Rings, you know, in New Zealand, big production. This is going to be another screw up, isn't it? And all that sort of thing. And I am proud to say that I was the first person who got up and said, Ladies and gentlemen of the press, revise your expectations upwards. Three predictions. One, this film that we're doing now is going to outgross the new Star Wars, at which point Peter Jackson buries his head <laughs> in his hands. <laughs> Two, these films, when they come out, are going to be regarded as the most remarkable and successful films uh, of the decade. And in 20, 25 years' time, when you look back, you will recognize them as being a masterpiece of, of, of filmmaking. Wow. And then your son looked at the, that video and said, who is this guy? <laughs> who is this guy? How did he get, how did he change so fast? Wow. That is amazing. And uh, about 18 months later, PJ came to me and he said, you know, when you said that, I said, you mean when you bedded your head in my hands? He said, yes. As a matter of fact, the figures have just come in and we've just outgrossed the new Star Wars. Um, what? Uh, that is amazing. Well, you get, you know, I, I'd, I'd done some big ones. I did War and Remembrance, which mm -hmm. was 18 months of principal photography around the world. You get the... You get the sense of what can go wrong and what does wrong. Shogun, you know, losing that time, but then being able to make it up. In War and Remembrance, we had a, 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 one of our leading ladies came down with pneumonia. And, and basically, we had to stop filming for five, six weeks. The challenge for a big production like that is not getting behind. The real quality that production coordinators and great producers have is they can, they make it happen no matter what. In those days, there, there wasn't much accommodation to be had in South Island, New Zealand. We go down to Queenstown to shoot a sequence. We go down there with, you know, the principal actors, uh, you know, the, the hobbits, uh, the, the basically nine of the fellowship and one or two others. We've got 200, we've got 200 crew, we've got 200 horses, Nazgul, extras. So we're down there and um, it starts to rain. Now, production office is about three kilometers outside Queenstown. It rains, it, it rains. It, it rains again to the effect that it actually wipes out uh, seven or ten houses on the hillside overlooking the little road into uh, Queenstown. Wipes out that road and we've now got a 19 kilometer single track to get in and out and of, 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 of the center of town. This is the only time in my life that I've ever entered my hotel room um, via stepladder because the entire ground floor was wow. underwater. And that famous call sheet went out. There will be no filming tomorrow. 
because the lake is underwater. <laughs> the lake. And the lake, all the lake round Oh, us. my gosh. We didn't film that following day. The day after that, we moved to another part of New Zealand. And the day after that, we shot another sequence and finally went back later on. Jeez. The logistical qualities that you need to do that. Well, you know, if you were in the German army, you know, Rommel would be very happy to have you on his side. <laughs> great producers, great production coordinators, making phone calls all the time, talking to lonely farmhouses saying, can you put up our crew, you know, yeah. six members of our crew here. It was an Good analogy, yeah. Oh, amazing. That is, a, that is unbelievable. I know that the whole thing with it, we don't have to talk about it long, but with the tattoos, that everybody got a tattoo, but you were the one that didn't. I know you've talked about it, but you gave you, you told your stunt man to get a tattoo. Absolutely. I did what any self-respecting actor would do when faced with a, a dangerous stunt. I sent the stunt double. <laughs> And he did it. Oh, exactly. He's very proud of it, too. Do you regret it? Did you, did you, did you uh, if you could go back, would you have gotten the tattoo? Screw thee, no. <laughs> Do you have any tattoos? Good Lord, no. No, I'm not a tattoo man. You're not uh, a tattoo man. No, I, I, I'm, uh, um, yeah, you know, I, I, I don't like needles to begin with, but more than that, 